Hey everyone, George here, the Disney Family Man, coming to you with another video. I do apologize, I have had uh, some absence at the moment due to the fact of that I was actually at Disneyland. It's been over two years, but I've actually was able to make it back to the happiest place on earth, the OG park that started it all. And joining me today to talk about it, because we ended up doing something a little special my very good friend, also my brother, Mr. Vasky. How are you, my friend? I'm doing pretty well. Doing very well, brother. How about you? Doing good. So uh, as many of you know or don't know that actually I got to meet up with Mr. Vasky and our good friend Orange Grove 55 for a meetup at Disneyland. And uh, surprisingly, we will actually have a collabo video coming out soon, probably on Orange Grove's channel, about all that in-depth that we got to experience together. But today, we're going to talk about something that kind of happened after dark, so to speak, which actually was a very huge surprise that um, Vash had surprised me with that I didn't even think that I was going to even have the opportunity to experience at all, let alone this trip, but is the Oogie Boogie Bash after party, um, after hours party at Disney California Adventure. And I'm so excited to talk about this. And I was so excited that for the invite, I thank you immensely. You don't know how much it meant to me to actually experience it with you. And it was, it was very fun. I was, it was very satisfying. Oh, I, 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 uh, I completely agree. No, no, no. You're, you're very welcome, George. You're, you know, uh, unbelievably deserving of it, and, and we were happy to uh, accommodate uh, for you. No, I mean, it, look, uh, I I have never gone to an after hours uh, party uh, from Disney. Um, didn't go to uh, Mickey Scary Halloween Party. Didn't go to Oogie Boogie Bash. Haven't gone to like uh, Halloween Horror Nights or or Not Scary Farm. So this was uh, this was kind of like, hey, you know what? Um, we're gonna be in town. Uh, there are some party nights available. Let's just kind of splurge and, and kind of go go for it and uh it turns out i was i was pleasantly surprised with what i saw uh, um and and experienced uh I, I definitely understand the kind of uh the, the fandom or mystique uh for these uh type of parties and events so uh it was it was pretty pretty cool we'll get into it more in detail obviously but uh, overall i was i was i was pretty impressed Go ahead, George. Yeah, I really was too. And I think this type of party actually fits really well in California Adventure. I mean, I do enjoy when Disneyland or the Magic Kingdom have their their holiday decor parties and after-hour special events. But I don't know. This one in particular, the way the layout was uh, for the park in general and what they had going for them as far as the activities and the trick-or-treat trails, I think – Oogie Boogie Bash, I would not be able to see at Disneyland. It fits perfectly in the DCA setting. I think it does. I think it does. And they definitely take a more kind of villain's uh, approach to it. Um, it's not even, uh, you know, my mother who, who accompanied us was remarking that it's not even really that uh, Halloween themed, so to speak. Uh, if, if, you know, if you have certain reservations about that theme or whatever, it really is just a kind of a... Uh, celebration of the villains and with that theme extended throughout i mean it really does uh create a quite a different atmosphere quite a different uh c kind of event that then you would normally see in in any one of the surrounding parks in the area so i was i was i was pleasantly surprised pleasantly surprised in how they leveraged their ip to such a great extent yeah, I actually agree with you. It, it does have, and of course, I agree with your mom, which I actually was able to meet both of your parents at this trip. It was, it was a pleasure to have uh, met them and get to know them. So, um, they they were a couple characters. They're they're quite a hoot. <laughs> they're they're they are quite interesting, aren't they? <laughs> in a very good but way. In, in, very in the best way possible. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, just to you know pull back the curtain a little bit on the show. Um, I've been trying to have my mother come on for, for a while now because uh, as far as operations and, and as far as her knowledge of the parks, it's actually pretty extensive, and she comes at it from a point of view that's quite quite different and unique. And so I've been trying to, like, get her on, but, uh, you know, eventually, eventually. It'll, it'll happen, yeah, and after meeting her in person, I think she would definitely be a great asset to, to the show, definitely. I think so, too. I think yeah. so, too. <laughs> Uh, but, but, um, but but to actually to her notion, I actually agree. I love how it 
you can kind of have that party whether it's during Halloween time or not. And I really think the villains need to be more represented in the parks. They have no love whatsoever. It's like here and there, you know. The, but if you really think about it, when it comes to the animated films, you need that antagonist to carry along the story because the protagonist is just going to be sitting there with his hands in his pockets. So it's like, you know, the villains need more love. Yeah, exactly. And and it, it, it makes the highs better, right? The highest highs are only as high as they are with, with the lowest lows. So uh, you're right in that they add a uh, nice contrast and, and, and depth to some of the more heroic aspects that we're kind of used and, and kind of fond of seeing. I, I do think that yeah, they, they, like you said, they are underutilized. We've gone over shows where we've, you know, to your to your credit, George, that you've had ideas about bringing or incorporating uh, the villains into the parks on a more permanent basis. And I still think they should pursue those. But this was a nice um, outlet for a lot of the creatives to, to kind of to, 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 to introduce the villains into a park like DCA into, in, in a big, big way. And it really, really worked out quite well. And especially the the title of the party, you know, Oogie Boogie Bash. I mean, it was based off of a villain that a lot of people never really had too much of a connection with for how many years because it belongs to a film that became a cult classic within time. Like, I mean, Night, The Nightmare Before Christmas was something that, you know, wasn't too big at the box office at the time. But as time went on, it just became this cultural phenomenon that, like, during – the holidays, not just Halloween, but Christmas as well. I mean, the the holiday decor, the uh, merchandising, and then the promotional things for the parks, it just blew everybody's mind. Oh, abs- oh absolutely, yeah. Um, the, like you said, like it, it, Night Before Christmas at the box office didn't do all that well, but it became this kind of cl- cult classic that was loved universally by people uh, who were fans of Disney, but also people who were who, who kind of were in Disney. And it's like, hey, you know, maybe... Maybe we can bring this to, to life in some way, and uh, that the first real ex, um, ex, uh, what is it? Um, uh, the, the the first real kind of exploration of that idea was with the Haunted Mansion Holiday, and it was I mean it, it blew people's minds. It was really really good, and I think you brought it up at the at the party itself. It's like man, that that night before Christmas uh, merch really does sell and you are correct it does sell and i'm sure that had a lot of uh <laughs> that had that had a lot to do with with the specific theme of uh of oogie boogie bash itself but no i mean these you know these characters this story is now like this perennial that just you know they just keep banking on um and and it, and it does work it does work in this in this in this um unique setting it it i think it was a a great thing to choose for this party and you can kind of see the embellishments of 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 the party theme kind of uh, kind of strewn throughout really really nicely so uh, i good fit yeah absolutely now kind of starting off with the party itself sure that they allow you to actually enter in through the park several hours prior to the party itself Mm -hmm. where that's when they're going to start kind of like um kind of pushing the regular day guests kind of like further out to the exit as more people are coming in for the party but i think that's a a nice gesture that even though you know you you buy a premium price ticket for a, a party or an event and they allow you to go in several hours before not necessarily right on the hour of when the party starts so i actually think that's a nice little touch that disney incorporates in the tickets oh yeah no i i completely agree with you um i i i personally think that uh the 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 ability to go in as many hours as they give you i mean the ticket itself says like three three hours before so if the party starts at six you can go in at three that's kind of what it says Uh, we were actually able to walk in like what 2 30 i think it was yeah Yeah, it was was before three o'clock Oh yeah, which is uh, that's a heck of amount of time that they give you as part of these parties. So uh, just as a pure value statement, uh, with time in the park, I mean it it it's pretty good. Uh, they 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 do treat you nicely. Uh, they bifurcated the line, so you know you have your regular turnstiles for uh, day guests, but then you have uh, party exclusive uh, entrance, uh, you know, uh, turnstiles to, to to walk through. After that, they give you uh, they they kind of check you in give you a wristband that you'll be using throughout your day. That's kind of how they clear out the park. So they'll, 
and we experience this uh, in, in multiple sections. Uh, they'll cut off certain sections of the park and will only have you get past a certain point if you actually have a wristband. And then they'll, you know, sim- similarly, when the party actually, um, you know, uh, starts, they'll cut off some certain ser- services to you if you don't have a wristband. So I thought that was pretty cool. You check in, they give you a bag for your treat, which, by the way, <laughs> if you rely only on those bands, you're going to be missing out. You got to have some other, you got to have some other bags to get the, uh, as much candy as you possibly can. So uh, I would definitely recommend that. And then you're in. Um, and like I said, I mean, the, the sun was, was, was out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quite heavily when when we were, when we got there, so uh, they 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 did give you a nice uh, little 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 period of time, which which is nice. It really was because it ended up allowing us to spend some time in Avengers Campus because that's essentially where we went prior to the party, where we <laughs> had a little um, uh, late lunch, early <laughs> dinner, kind of like in between sort of thing. Which it was actually my first time experiencing anything in the Pim Test Kitchen. Because I was really um, excited for like trying the uh, the oversized pretzel and the the oversized uh, chicken sandwich with the little bun and with the the tater tots and everything, and right. um, which that actually was really good. I was actually impressed with the chicken. The chicken was very, uh, for me, any kind of chicken that is crunchy on the outside but it's very. Um, juicy and tender on the inside that's the perfect chicken for me anything that's overcooked dried out chicken it's like eh, not not really for me um but they actually did it well and the creativity behind it was just like the oversized pretzel and everything it was but i mean there were some things that i would strongly suggest you know not getting next time or having it like completely Obliterated right out of the menu. It's like, mm-hmm. so, and I think you know what I'm talking about. I think I do. So we have some photos. If you want to bring those up right now, uh, that we can share. So the, like you said, the chicken sandwich. Uh, we, you know, we we kind of tasted off each other's uh, off each other's dishes just to get a, a kind of a nice, uh, uh, you know, a sense of what they were offering there. Because, like you said, I mean, even I hadn't been able to sample all of the you know bites at, at pim's test kitchen so this was actually a treat um f- for us as well uh the chicken sandwich like you said very tender it was actually very very good like you said it was it was really really nice and the um huh, i forget what they call it but the tater tots uh i think they call them potato barrels or something because tater tots is trademark technically right. it's kind of funny yeah. um <laughs> They were seasoned quite nicely. They were uh, very seasoned well. I mean, sometimes a lot of times you just get plain tater tots or tater barrels, you know, whatever they're called, mm-hmm. and you need like ketchup or you need ranch or something. These you don't mm-hmm. need anything. No, no, they have some. They have some uh, some spices added to them, and, and it really you could taste it, and it was it was very very flavorful. Uh, a plus in, in my book when it comes yes. to this. Yeah, uh, really really nice. Uh, have some some photos strewn throughout. But, that uh, I have to say. Yeah, that was one of the best uh, panini sandwiches I've ever had. I agree. I the the it, the bread is yes. just amazing. It, it's it's slightly toasted. It's kind of crunchy. It's hard uh, combined with that very very soft interior and the you know meats done to perfection. The sauce that they give you uh, to accompany it. I mean, it's all just mm, it's so good. Very, very well done. That was. Yeah, that was I could definitely, I could definitely see why people would get the hundred dollar one for sure. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Yeah, if you have enough of people and it's like you know that you can utilize it, might as well, might as well get it. Might as well go. Uh, let's see, and then we have uh, the pretzel. Um, that was a really good pretzel. A very, very good pretzel. Now you actually good. said because we were asking whether or not this compared to the uh, Germany pavilions in Epcot. In Epcot's World Showcase, uh, their Bavarian pretzel. What do you think? Uh, this, uh, and I remember quoting that this pretzel was actually, um, and I hate to really use this term, but it was more edible. It actually was where I don't know if it was just the time of day or how they were mm-hmm. prepared, if they were sitting, but uh, the pretzel with the Germany was kind of um, overcooked, so to speak. Oh. It was, it was kind of tough. You have to kind of chew it and chew it until it like you know, take a big glass of water to try to get it done no but this this pretzel was perfect it had the, the, a great ratio of salt 
it had its own, you know, taste. Uh, the bear cheese, I could do without. You know, I didn't really need it. I could eat the pretzel just as is or with the mustard. Um, yeah. I, I think they kind of went a little bit too far with the cheese. Uh, I... I do agree. I do agree. Um, I think the the beer cheese that that is the downer of it. I just wish, I kind of wish they would just give you regular nacho cheese. To be honest with you, yes, <laughs> like, that's, just... that's me. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, nacho just, cheese. Yeah, whether it, you it, want like jalapenos with it or on the side or what have you, but just the the the, the regular nacho cheese. I, I would think. I look. Like, I know people. You know, people either love or hate the stuff. I think this is as, as divisive, if not more. Um, <laughs> you know, some people, some people like it. I've heard some people like it. I, I just, I don't know. After having it twice, it's just uh, it doesn't work for me um, in, in quite the quite the same way that maybe my initial thoughts may have. Uh, and and it could just be batches. I don't know because the first time I had it, it wasn't so bad. I actually kind of liked it. Now it's like uh, this doesn't quite work out. Uh, maybe as well as I thought. So I would, I kind of go with something, something simpler. This is I, Disney getting a little bit too cute with it. Yeah. <laughs> and you can kind of tell. I think, I think with, with bear cheese, it's almost like you have to have it fresh right as it comes out, put in the container, hand it to you, and then you use it. I think anytime, even if it's like sitting for like three, four or five minutes and it gets that, you know, it gets coagulated and it's like, mm -hmm. it loses its, and then all the flavor just kind of congeals and it's like, Eh, not for me. <sighs> it doesn't it doesn't quite work. Uh, interesting too. They okay. So when we went, they were laying the pretzels down and serving them uh, in a manner very similar to what I have on the screen there. I have obviously added some things <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, 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 to, just to be able to transport to the to the table, and that's why I bring it up because the transportation to the table was kind of it, it was a little dicey because of just how many items that we actually had, which is I think why they stood them up to begin with. So. When we were there, they were doing this, but then when, like, I think like an hour later or something like that, they had changed again, and now they were standing them up, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's yeah, it like right after we were done, they were they were handing them out, like, on those little... On the racks. The little racks, yeah, exactly, which I think was kind of interesting. I mean, not that this has anything to do with the party or anything, but just Avengers mm -hmm. Campus in general, that, you know, with with your mom being there and able to you know, find us a table and, you know, hold some seats that we had a lot. We had like almost three, four trays. So if you don't have a person, you know, to get a table for you ahead of time, those tables, they get snatched up quick and then there's nowhere else to sit. So you're basically standing there <laughs> with all your trays, praying to God that nothing is going to spill or fall uh, over. That's a good point. That is a good point. Um, I, also, too, it was very, very hot that day. So the tables that were in shade, you know, not, you know, those are those are kind of hard, hard to come by as well. Uh, you make a very good point. I mean, there's just. There's not quite as much seating as you would think the marquee restaurant for the marquee land would have. Yeah, uh, I agree. It, it's almost like it's the West Coast version of uh, Toy Story Land. Because Toy Story Land at Hollywood Studios, yeah, you you couldn't get a seat to save your life as unless you're right by Woody's Lunchbox. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Now, speaking of a disaster, <laughs> well, here we go. This is why I bring it up. <laughs> this was the uh, I, I don't know. Don't I don't quote me, folks, of the actual title of this. This was mm -hmm. a PB and J uh, slushy. I would I would think it wasn't a milkshake. It was it was a it's a PB and J something. I'll say that much. It. <sighs> The the texture was fine. It was the flavor. The flavor had a very bizarre. There's just certain things that you don't put in a slushy or a milkshake, and peanut butter and jelly is one of them. Now, I actually have had a peanut butter and jelly milkshake mm -hmm. at. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the restaurant. It's called Burgatory. Burgatory. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, where would that be? Maybe it's an East Coast thing. It's it's a it's a burger joint. They're known for their burgers oh, and their famous um, exotic milkshakes. Now it fits well with a milkshake, but I, th th this was not a milkshake. This was actually like a slushy, where it it had like a juice texture to it, 
And as you can see, the juice was what that quote unquote was like the jelly. It came with whipped cream on top and then these little peanut butter, peanut butter balls. Mm -hmm. um, the front of it as you're drinking it is fine because it has a little bit of that jelly jam fruity taste. Sure. When it hits your palate in the back of the tongue and you get that strong peanut butter taste, it is – and Vash can vouch for oh, it because he man. tried it as well. It, I, I'm, I'm – as you're describing it, I'm <laughs> <laughs> pulling those flavors back up and, oh, boy, I, <laughs> not, not good at all. Yeah, I was able to try it. It's gross. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It's gross. Uh, like you said, starts out okay, and then when it, when it kind of, that, that, that aftertaste. Aftertaste. Kinda comes it was out. the oh, aftertaste. It's... It was, and you, and it doesn't go right away. It, it settles in the palate, and it's almost like you have to drink something else. And, and thank God I ended up getting another font and drink, because I thought, you never know. I'm a little bit adventurous today, but I thought, I'm going to get a font and drink just in case, and I'm glad I did. Uh, it's a good thing you did, because you, you know, it, uh, man, this. Not good, guys. Not good. Yes. Not good. It, you know, uh, again, it's Disney being just maybe just a little bit too cute. Got to yeah. got to rein it back in a little bit. Yeah. And this one. This one was a miss. Every, honestly, every, everything else at Pim's Kitchen was right. phenomenal. It was the and even the overall theming. I loved walking in there and seeing the oversized uh, condiments, you know, and um, I, I had to make sure that I said that correctly because we had a little bit of a mishap that your mom thought I said something else. <laughs> and <it> was... <laughs> uh, oh, boy. <laughs> it might be the, the Pennsylvania accent. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. <laughs> oh, man, then, that's funny. Um, oh, and then having the oversized soda cans kind of like linked to the dispenser where you actually get your fine drinks. That, to me, I thought was just genius. That was... Yeah. Imagineering at its finest of doing an overall storytelling just within a, like a quick service type of restaurant setting. It is it is really cool. Uh, the the theme of everything um, at Pim's Test Kitchen. I mean, even the even the the walkway when you walk in. I didn't get a picture of it again, but it's just it it's all really really well done. It's all really really uh, uh, kind of um, uh, it just 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 well executed. Well designed, well thought. Um, there are some there are some quirks that I that I don't like, but I don't want to get into the weeds. It, it it was very very good, and also the the food outside of this drink that you're seeing on the screen was okay. was very it was very very good. Like everything was 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 honestly top notch. And and this goes into my other point too. I I don't mean to segue too much, but the food program at Disney California Adventure it's absolutely excellent. I mean just yes. just really really. Really, really high quality. It gets, really, really it good gets stuff. overshadowed, to be honest with you, like compared to people saying, you know, oh, Disneyland's is better. And I think if a lot of people gave it a chance and really looked beyond just those main hot spots like Lamplight Lounge and what have you, but if me, if you look at some of the smaller places, you can get good quality food for a decent price. You can, you can. I, I think, I think Disney California Adventure still kills it on the food. I think it, I think yeah. it kills. It on the food when compared to Disneyland, I think it's I think it's really really good, and the the variety of items is is, is stunning. And honestly, a Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta is still not open. So even now, even with this reduced state, I think it's still doing phenomenal. I think it's still doing uh, better than than its uh, Disneyland counterpart. So, all right. So uh, I guess this takes us into the the actual uh, meat and potatoes of the party. After yes. we you know uh, got into it with the food. The party had really kicked off by this point, so uh, go ahead, take us off. So this was a photo that was taken um, right as we were walking down Route 66 into Cars Land, which I was actually really excited to see Cars Land during the Halloween time because I've seen photos, I've seen video, but I've never personally seen it for myself. Yeah. And the the haunted yeah, Hall Halloween, you know, it's like they have everything of the decor, um, and it was. It, it, the 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 lighting on this was just when you approach Radiator Springs Racers with the Ornament Valley and everything to actually these photos are awesome. But I mean, if you were to see it in person, that it it it's honestly it, it's 
there's no words to describe it. It's like you have to experience it in person. It's like another time and place, uh, honestly, uh, with with how it's just it's just stunning how the rock work just 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 by color, just by just by lighting changes the entire atmosphere of the place. And uh, you know, you're seeing this amazingly themed rock work that that we've been experiencing for years now and to and to see it kind of lit up in in this kind of different uh the this this different lighting package is 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 quite stunning it really is um and i wish i had more photos of the 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 rest of of cars land because the 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 decorations itself just throughout the whole boulevard is 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 really really stunning it really is uh, quite something to witness uh, every single character who has its own kind of shop on on route 66 has its uh they, their kind of own flavor of halloween decoration so you get something a little bit different at ramones and you do at luigi's and so forth uh and you you really see that uh, brought to life it, it is it is really really cool folks i mean even if you can't go into the the party get down to cars land and check it out because it's really really fun yeah, and that's the one benefit that if you, you know, you aren't able to make it to the party, you know, if you're at DCA during just the regular business hours, this Halloween decor at Cars Land is still up and available for guests to experience. And we we're fortunate enough to ride Radiator Springs Racers yes. um, during this time. And there was no um, overlay of the ride. It's just the actual ride itself. But to ride it at night with all the the lighting and the colors and it just it, it was perfect i was just it was it was great it was it was really fantastic um i, I still i you know it, it still kind of bothers me a little bit that it, it doesn't get some kind of overlay i kind of get it though it's one of the largest attractions in disney california adventure even to have that offline for even a week would be you know be quite a stretch for that park so i kind of get why they don't do uh an overlay in a similar fashion that we saw with maybe you know, Jingle Cruise, Jingle Cruise, or our um, Haunted Mansion Holiday, or Small World Holiday. I kind of understand it, but it'd be nice to have maybe something. But um, but overall, with when you're when you're racing through this rock work lit up in this way, it is really kind of a, a unique, incredible experience. Uh, one that I definitely recommend. Yeah, I do too. I agree. It just it, it puts a whole new, different meaning of like experiencing that ride. It's like rewriting it for the first time all over again right 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 uh so the uh but carson's not the only place that they really do up i mean they they um they they imbue so much like wonderful creative magic in in all corners and sections of the park and this was one of them so what you're looking at right here people don't recognize off the bat is this is the waiting the previous waiting area for the Hyperion Theater now converted into extended Pim's Test Kitchen seating, uh, you know, right right along right between the Hyperion Theater and um, at this at this point it was uh, Gardens of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark. Uh, this is that seating area just with a little bit of lighting put in there and a couple of uh, additional effects. It, it really did transform the area, and this happened throughout the entire park. Yeah, that's the one thing that it's very subtle. It, they blend it in so well, and you kind of have to actually look for it. And I know a lot of people just bypass it without even really focusing on it. But if you were to stop at each section of DCA while you know everything is lit, and it, it is just immaculate what they do with the lighting and the, the color uh, palette that they choose for each individual section, and it, it fits so well with the overall theming. It does. It does. Uh, in this instance, it was the tree trail for the Mad Hatter from the uh, Alice Wonderland uh, live action films. So you get to see that a little bit here. Uh, and I love how like where they have the, the characters, it, it they design it so it's not like in your face, but you can see the subtleties of the character within that film. Like you could see like the steps that go up to the chair. You can kind of see that whimsical Tim Burton type of uh style to it so it fits well where you, it's it's more so they're not just placing a character in a dca setting but they're creating a setting for dca for yeah. that particular character right 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 
Uh, I totally agree. Totally agree. The the probably the most stunning one that we saw is coming up here. Uh, so <laughs> traveling from the Hyperion queue there, going to the Hollywood Pictures backlot area, uh, we can see that more of DCA is done up for the Halloween festivities, as you can see right there. But as we make our way around, we see this. Yes. <laughs> and this takes up the stage that's in the Hollywood Pictures backlot area. Um, and it, I mean, this this was pretty incredible. Go, go ahead, George, describe this for us. This was, out of all the character meet and greets as far as for the, the candy trout, this was the one for the, the live action Corella, uh, Emma Stone version of the film Corella. And again, with the setting and the backdrop, they just didn't have... Corella standing or sitting on the chair like uh, but they had props and the the music from the film the, the the movie soundtrack was blasting and Corella was interacting with the guests as they're going through the treat trail and you see all the graffiti um the neon lights in back of her and I mean the costuming and I even brought it to uh Vash's attention that there was actually uh, talk about overall theming garbage bags that they literally had sitting on the stage yeah that it was there there they are right in front of you that it just yeah, yeah. it fits so well with the overall theming of not just the character but the the film and it's like you have the uh all her sketch work and and everything and it has like that that punk rock type of feel and it like it just if they could pick a character mm -hmm. that fits so well for this party this this was it like this yeah. was the overall and the amount of people that was dressed as e Corella or the puppies oh or, man i mean it was it, it became a phenomenon it, it's huge it's huge uh you know it, it's we don't have many indicators to give us uh, a good tracking on just how big things are quite right now because you know the box office obviously we, we don't have the same results that we have in the past that we've uh that you know that we could historically go to and say, oh, this is a big move. This made over $750 million or, or whatever. Um, this was a really good indicator. I mean, I understand it's a biased crowd. It's Disney. But uh, this was a good indicator that this film was, did incredibly. I mean, it, it really touched, uh, you know, uh, profoundly some, 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 some individuals there. And you could see that they were, you know... <laughs> Uh, so many Cruellas, so many uh, you know costumes in that vein and stuff like that. And this this uh, meet and greet was, or I should say, treat trail. This was this was a pretty long one. This is probably the longest yes. one of the night uh, that 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 we found. Um, still, it it went by relatively quickly, maybe seven. 12 minutes or something like that. It, w it wasn't that long, but uh, but compared to the other treat trails, this one was very highly popular. Sought after. Oh yeah, yeah. And it and folks, you're probably wondering, okay, well, this is about Cruella. You know, why isn't she there? We're seeing oh. the stage. Well, unfortunately, what had happened was <laughs> we went through the whole entire tree trail right as we approached to make that final turn to come face to face to the stage where Cruella was. Um, <laughs> I... I guess she had better things to do at that time than to to see us. I mean, I guess we were just a little bit beneath her at that moment. Ah, uh, well, it is fitting, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. She just she just went off stage at that point, so yeah. it was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, because we I'd kind of been saving my photos for uh for when we were closer, and then it's like, and she leaves. It's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? And then. And they had us, you know, couldn't even wait for it. They had us uh, exit the uh, tree trail, which was really unfortunate. It's like, oh, you have to wait again if you want to see her. It's like, nobody's gonna, actually going to do that. So that was a little bit unfortunate. I will say, Corella herself, the way she was made up, you can find photos of her and her mm -hmm. costume and, and stuff like that on auxiliary sites and so forth. Uh, it's just really, really well done. Um, I think that the costume in, in general... Uh, that you know for characters who have made appearances in the park when it comes to live action characters their costume is just amazing it's just gorgeous and this is no exception uh just really um on model and the actors there um portraying these characters whether it be agatha um you know cruella in this particular case sid from toy story 
um, oh, what is it, Maleficent. And, and everybody was really top notch. Really, really, really just put it out there, and it showed. It it really was. And speaking more so on the live action characters, when you have a performer that has to portray a character based off of another actor or actress, that takes a lot of raw talent. Because essentially, for, in the case of Corella, you had to have a performer to not only betray Corella, but had to betray Emma Stone as Corella. Because all those mannerisms, all that that vocality that that Emma Stone brought to the character, you have to bring that as the performer itself. You do, you do, you do. Um, it, it it was really it was really really cool to kind of to kind of see that. And uh, it over this the course of this you know shutdown period and and so forth, we had gotten so little of that, and to see that kind of uh, done up well uh, in this setting was was particularly. Rude rewarding so that was where it was really cool. it really was and just picture folks take a look at this backdrop mm-hmm. picture corella standing there walking back and forth and you just hear the soundtrack of blondie one way or another just blasting with mm-hmm. it i mean it was it was cool it, it really it sets you in that that mood and it was like it was perfect uh it was, it was great it was great um best tree child night i would i would yeah. say I agree. so we made our way back to um one of us street, the kind of the hub area, and you could see that they were using projections on Carly Circle here in creative ways. Uh, the whole kind of area here was was really done up. These purple lights were just stunning; they were amazing. And uh, you could see Meg. I missed Meg, but <laughs> you could yes. see Meg there, and you could see um, Hades. Hades. And then you could also see, which was crazy. Look at that. Pain and uh, panic. Yeah, pain and panic. So it, I mean, I don't even, I didn't even know they had these character costumes backstage. (laughs) I mean, the last that I've ever known these particular characters was during the Hercules parade when they were promoting the film back in 1997. But that was at Walt Disney World. You know, to even think that they had these costumes here at Disneyland was. It blew my mind. And as you could see, folks, when I took this picture, once again, as soon as we got there, they were exiting out. <laughs> so it's <Yep>. like, <laughs> yeah, so I yep. did happen to get a, a quick, a quick uh, flash to before they exited out. So. Which is good, which is good. Yeah. Um, but but there were a lot of like, really rare characters out. I, I mean, obviously, yes. like, you know, you don't see Maleficent all that all often. But I, I heard reports of like, you know, uh, characters from like Robin Hood and stuff and in in other areas of the park. So, you know, if you want to have uh, some time with some rare characters, uh, it would be, be the time enough. to do so. Uh, yeah. Uh, more photos of the uh, kind of boys on Mr. Street hub area. Just really, really cool. And then you can see that going down to previously Condor Flats, now Grizzly Peak Airfield. Um, let's see. And so, yeah, I got to get into this one. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, two of the big events that you want to see here are the parade, which, uh, we'll go into that into more detail, but also villains Grove. And it's where they've made almost like a kind of a Halloween maze type atmosphere out of Redwood. What was previously Redwood Creek challenge trail. Um, and, uh, it's not, uh, a typical horror parade that you would see maybe at, Halloween Horror Nights or Not Scary Farm. This is more, far more ethereal. Mm-hmm. And uh, George, maybe you can uh, provide some insight on, into this. Yeah, it, it's more like of a representation based off of the presence of the villains. Where it's not like where they're actually right in front of you and interacting with you, but you get that sense of their presence. Like in certain aspects, you have the Doctor Facilier uh, moment where you know he's talking to his friends on the other side and you, you have all these weird and quirky um special effects that are Im- Im- impl- implemented into the trail itself and then you have uh sort of like an elephant graveyard sort of feel with the scar where you see the the silhouette shadow of the hyenas passing by and where again it's a representation of the villains, but it's it's very subtle. But the way that they use the lighting 
and the, the special effects that is just something that you would never really think that you would ever see in a theme park. In, in the sense of this is stuff that you would actually see in the film in movies. And it, oh, yeah. it's, it's just very breathtaking that when you walk and you see all these special effects going off intertwined with the, 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 uh, the scope of everything that you would really think, okay, the, the Redwood trail is basically a child, you know, sort of playground and they transform it into this and this in front of you is the uh, the silhouettes of the hyenas, it, it, sort of like in the scar section, sort of speak. Right. But it's like you can find something as for how subtle or how small it is that you turn every corner inside that trail, you'll find something. Oh, it's 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 it really is incredible. Um, so this is supposed to be like the like if the villains had visited an area and their remnants were still there you know, their kind of essence was still there. What would they leave behind? This is kind of what that's supposed to be. And it's, it's kind of an abstract idea, but it works here. It really yeah. does work in a way that you kind of don't expect it to be. Cause you know, obviously there's, there's no like animatronics. There's no kind of figures. There's no kind of physical representation of these characters, but it's all this kind of ethereal kind of atmospheric stuff that really does work mm -hmm. quite well. Yeah, it really, um, it really does. And that was the word I was looking for. It was the essence of the villains. Like you could yeah. feel their presence as if they, they kind of left their, their trademarks, so to speak. And, mm -hmm. and it's very subtle, but yet it's very recognizable. Like you can go to a section and say, okay, this is because of this villain. This is because of this villain. And it's again, just the, the scope and the, the colors and the lighting, it just, it, they really transformed this, and this I thought was really cool with the the Cheshire Cat with um, uh, out from Alice in Wonderland of how they kind of made like this kind of like dazed and confused type of swirly light projection with uh, the the grin of the Cheshire Cat and everything, and then he disappears and he yeah. reappears, and it, yeah. it it's awesome. It is really cool. Uh, these 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 signs were pretty cool because those were know, cool too because they changed. They as, changed as the color changed. Uh -huh. So did the wording on the signs, and I thought that was really cool. Very cool effect. Um, and we're kind of going through here, and you can see this is the um, uh, what is it, the the uh, the evil queen or the the um, queen from Alice in Wonderland. Or, queen yes. of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just really really cool um every kind of area represents the villains in some way so you saw the candelabra section in the in the in the front of this uh that was from uh frollo from uh, hunchback and Notre Dame. and you know you can see some stained glass on the on the on the you know up the the ground, the ground. and so forth yeah uh just really really cool this is more evil queen here the, the, the queen of hearts and you could just see, like, it just transforms the entire area. I mean, that the the bottom is completely fogged out. Just the the amazing lighting. I mean, you really have to see this in and, person. And, folks, and, so. and if you were to see the trail at daylight during its normal, regular operational hours, you would never think that these were the two. This was the same thing as the the Villains Grove. You'd never think. You yeah no you you would. You would never think this is <laughs> this has anything to do with uh, Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. I mean, it really they do transform the area quite heavily. I know there is a changeover that they do at the start of um, these parties uh, for the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. Uh, I think it's like maybe like it's a week load in, maybe a couple day load out or whatever. They they do have to put up some stuff, but but it's not much. It's 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 real nice and subtle, and it's uh, it's it's quite clever how they use some of these effects. You can see the the kind of use of lasers at the top of top here, kind of creating this kind of uh, canopy, um, the kind of strobe LED kind of lightning effects that they have going off. It, like I said, folks, you got it. You got to see this for yourself. Yes. And here's the finale, which I cannot capture. I couldn't capture in photos. No, for the life no, of me. I, I tried so too. And this is something that you, it's so unique and different that if you were to try to get a photo, you can somewhat see what you're going for, but the, the dimensions of 
these lights oh, at the very goodness. end. It is, it almost gives you sort of like that Twilight Zone feel. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a sort bit. of like how it it gives you this. As I said, it's it's very hard to describe. It's where it's like one light connecting to another, and it's almost like this oversized prism of yeah. of these lights. And it's as I said, the layers and the dimension of it. It's I, I'm so glad that they saved that for the finale because it. Oh, abs oh, absolutely, and and the effect too is is kind of it's you can kind of see how it works, right? It's like a split laser effect. It's it's almost simplistic in that way, but the, because it's cast on these trees, like you said, it does create this kind of radical prism effect, extremely bright, and just it's mesmerizing. It really, really is. This is this is some some quality stuff here. It really is. And they save, yeah, and, and this is coming up to the, the actual, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, ending. And you pass through this kind of, uh, it, it's it's supposed to be this kind of uh, hollowed out tree or, or tree stump, so to speak, and you're walking through it. But it, they the way they've lit it is you have this huge... Uh, uh, beam of light shining down with all this fog. It, it really is and it's kind of uplifting kind of uh, atmospheric music. It really is quite something. It, it really is quite interesting how it's like this yeah, beacon of yeah, light, it's this like, hope. Yeah it's, yeah, it's like despite it being the villain's grove, it's like they still end you on a high note of right. you know you're you're walking into the light and it's like, you know, you're you're escaping the forces of evil, sort of speak, and it just makes you feel good after exiting out. Yeah, it does. It does. It's a power cleanser. It, it's it's um. This is quite something, folks. It it, it is so hard to describe. Um, uh, you know, just uh, it just you know, vocalizing our thoughts and so to speak. It it's you really got to see it. It's really interesting. Really fascinating. I I thought I, this was a standout feature as part of the 2019 uh, version of Oogie Boogie. Uh, uh, Oogie Boogie uh, Bash. Um, when they moved it from Disneyland to California Venture, you know they were they were, you know, putting in um, uh, some some events, some 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 uh, exclusive features to these to, to this version of the party specifically, and it's still the highlight. It's still really really interesting. It really is, and they couldn't have picked a better spot for it. No, no, I, they 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 utilize that area quite well. I was. You know, it was interesting because I was while I was reading about it for the debut in 2019. I was like, "Man, what is this going to be like?" You know, this is going to be very, very interesting. And I know uh, my family was excited to see it and, and all that kind of stuff. And and it was, and and it was a highlight of the party that I was looking forward to when we were getting in. And it it, it really did uh, uh, meet up to live up to those expectations quite quite nicely. Absolutely. It's another. And and of course, we have right here the uh, mistress of all evil herself. We have mm -hmm. uh, Maleficent. And I love how what they did with this is you have her on the upper level with, you know, her throne and everything. But then down below, you kind of have that green glow of when she uses to cast a spell on Aurora. And you see the uh, the spinning wheel and everything and the kind of like those jagged edge type of feel to it. So I, I love how, again, even just like with a candy trail where you see these villains that they have their areas set up so, so themed and, you know, so well done that it's a lot of times you just focus on the character, but if you really stop and look beyond of uh, their surroundings, it's very quite fascinating. It is, it is, it is the, the kind of uh, extra props that they bring, bring out the kind of placemaking that they, that they um, install uh, for these tree trails is, is, is really, really quite fun. Absolutely. See. Can't get enough of those trees. Like the the lighting on those trees with the backdrop of Carthay Circle. I mean, they couldn't have done that any more better if they tried. No, no, no. Uh, you could see here the uh, the side profile of uh, the Carthay River Run uh, yes. Mountain. A little bit of Adventures Campus. Unfortunately, we weren't able to see Agatha. Oh. Yes. Ah, oh, it's still... You know, for as much time as they give you, you still you don't quite it's, have enough in some it's, places. It's just like going to the regular parks. You think, hey, you know what? I got enough of time, got to see everything, but 
they 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 pack it in there so it's like they want you to come back and experience more they do they do they do so the parade uh, uh this is uh folks if you're going here you gotta catch this one uh george take it away here yes this parade was and we actually ended up getting um quoting from a cast member this was the best spot to see the parade right as um you're coming off of uh, pixar pier going around paradise gardens is where they start the parade out and i loved how they started this with the uh the legend of sleepy hollow with ichabod crane and the headless horseman which i have seen a video of the headless horseman but i've never got to see him in person That's and i'm cool. so glad he did i mean it's just it's chilling it, it gives you that chilling feeling that you have this figure riding on top this humongous dark horse and it's like mm. You hear the clippity clop and it's like it takes you into that moment and to actually have Ichabod Crane. I've never seen Ichabod Crane in anything. I guess I really never really paid attention, but I love how they kind of started that as the narration of the parade itself where, you know, it then starts kind of like the um, the the fun stuff with Mickey and his friends kind of like in their their Halloween decor and everything with the and every float. Every float was spot on oh, with man. the overall theming. And I think you can agree with me. My all time favorite part of the parade was the haunted mansion grin, grimming ghosts. Yes. With the hitchhiking ghosts leading the pact. It was mm -hmm. the, the synchronize of the dancing and the choreography. It was, Oh, it was awesome. Uh, this, this was, this was quite something. So uh, to give you a little bit of backstory here, with what we're seeing right now, this uh, headless horseman, um, he has been a fixture as as part of the special Halloween time uh, parades, going back uh, quite a few years. Uh, I, I think like thirty years or so, he has been this this fixture in front of these parades. Um, and and you know, if you look at old uh, video footage of of him leading parades like he does. You can see um, him galloping through the parks, uh, you know, like Magic Kingdom and Disneyland, and it it is quite something. I think they <laughs> they have him kind of slowly jaunt through the parks now. Uh, probably less dangerous, <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> because that 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 actor you know, can't see, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, but but it was it was really really cool to see this in person. Uh, you know, I I I I kind of seen. Uh, this element as part of other parades for for a long long time, but never having see, seen it my, myself in person, like like George said, it was re it was really 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 cool. But this parade, you know, what's notable about this is this is the first legitimate parade to ever make its way uh, down a parade route in front of a live live audience in front of park guests in any dom in domestic park. Uh, so, you know, the 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 entertainment crew was really really. Uh, proud of that uh, of, of kind of bringing these parades back and, and so forth and in this in this in this way um but like you said the the haunted mansion unit i i wish i had more photos but i think between george and i was like yeah let's enjoy this you know yeah. there's probably better videos out there and you can experience them for sure um that haunted mansion unit is phenomenal from stem to stern you know to start out with the with the three hitchhiking ghosts and kind of end with the, I think it was the shovelers. I think was the the shovelers. Yes, mm -hmm. that was, oh, with man. the sparks and everything. Uh huh. That oh, was the, the the choreography, the the ballroom dancers, uh, Constance. You know, it was it was fantastic. It was phenomenal. And then at the back of the float, you have the uh, the frightened old man. Yes. Kind of like he's like you, you know with <laughs> that was that was awesome. Right, right, right. The uh, crypt keeper or whatever. Uh, crypt, yeah. Yeah, the graveyard, some caretaker. They, they call yeah. him something, but yeah, he's, um, yeah. so good, so so good. Uh, but really, the overall the parade was was quite phenomenal. The choreography, you know, to see it where the parade starts right here, mm -hmm. uh, next to uh, the the Paradise Garden Grill kind of beer garden area, uh, you can kind of see the performers. They were fresh, you know. This was the first parade uh, of the night, and you can just you could see the enthusiasm. You can see the passion. Uh, maybe that wouldn't have been quite the same way 
<laughs> on the other side of the parade route. But right. you can see it here, and it was it was really really rewarding. And then, like the for the finale to have the villains float with all the villains kind of like united, you know, coming. I don't. I really honestly don't think they missed a villain. I mean, they had Jafar, they had Hades, they had uh, uh, Maleficent, they had Corella. They they had villains that you really don't really think to even think to see in in the parks. Like they had Frollo, they had uh, Governor Radcliffe from Pocahontas. It was yep. like I mean, they added all these these villains together and it was like what a way to cap off a, a already awesome parade oh yeah uh, awesome it was an awesome way to, to to do it and uh man it's just uh this was really cool this was this was this was really uh really fun it, again the two things you got to do villains grove and this parade mm -hmm. like you have to have to do them i i guess they do have dessert packages as well <laughs> we saw the seating and and so forth set up for that it, it, quite a bit for that so yeah <laughs> uh, you know maybe you might be able to get into that maybe not but uh they, they, they had a quite a quite a few of those and i guess we'll see that in in other events uh upcoming uh when when uh nighttime spectaculars return to to both walt disney world and disneyland so keep on the lookout for that uh let's That's see good. after that we got to see sid uh from toy story now, uh, uh, folks, <laughs> now the, the photo that I have taken of this uh, particular performer, as said, and nothing against the performer himself. I'm for sure he did a phenomenal job. Um, I guess the best way that I could say this without sounding like a jerk is there are certain performers that should stick to certain type of characters. I think this particular character does not fit this performer's profile um the sid that l came on uh stage later on while we were going through the trail he was completely spot on if you literally took the character straight from the the computer and brought him to life he was perfect and again nothing against this performer but just i think the other sid was much better but all in all i'm so glad that they kind of find a place for Sid because this is a character from a beloved classic Pixar film, the film that started it all for Pixar. Mm -hmm. And they, they brought they incorporated him into Pixar pier, which I think is perfect as far as uh, the overall theming, you know, to meet a quote unquote villain um, for this particular performer. I would actually say, put him in the attire of grown up Sid <laughs> like from Toy Story Three, as the the, the garbage man, kind of like right, that. right, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> that's but deep it, cuts right there. Huh? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it was really cool to actually see Sid. We got, we got to see Sid, Corella, and again, unfortunately, we didn't get to see Agatha. It would have been really cool to see. Kind of saw her from afar, but her tree show was mighty long. <laughs> hers was very very long, yeah. and it. I mean, despite that, Corella's tree trail moved quickly. Hers was kind of standing around a little uh, bit. it was it was and just to give you an idea folks so you have the dr strange area within the avengers campus all of that is switch back switch back switch back you know for the her tree trail and then that line curls and goes all the way out to cars land to uh the you know cozy comb motel mm -hmm. that's where it was kind of and it was curling from there so it would have been quite a bit of weight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, uh hey you know it, the, the the risk you take, I guess, is when you get in the line with these tree trails. Doesn't mean you, you necessarily see the villains <laughs> because yes, when they that, if they that exit out, there is, you go. That is very true. It, just know that that you can wait in line and just know that you know if timing isn't right on your side, you know you might have to because you can't stand and wait. You know mm -hmm. you have to keep moving and you might have to get back in line. Unfortunately. Ugh. Yeah, that that is the one kind of uh, downer about that. But uh, overall, um, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty great, pretty great experiences with the tree trails themselves. Uh, I think we did. Uh, so we did. Um, oh, this was your first time on Guardians of the Galaxy: Monsters After Dark. What do you have to think about this? What was, you have to say about that? Yeah, with uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy: uh, Monsters After Dark, I have to say I love that attraction just in general. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the the overlay to it really amplifies your senses around you because it's much darker. 
It's much creepier. It, you, you know, like you have like these flashing red lights going on, like the monsters broke out and you have to try to save baby Groot. And, and especially of how they incorporate rocket, the animatronic in the very beginning that they give him a whole nother set of script to go off of like it yeah. continues. I love, it's not just a brand new story. It continues like right after you break the guardians out from the collector. Well, what happens afterwards? And then rocket's like, you're still here. Well, being that you're here, this can work out to an advantage, you know, help me find my pal Groot. And, you know, you have all these monsters running around and we have to be the distraction and the, that that hard like kind of heavy metal music tied with it and it, it it just made an already thrilling attraction much more better yeah no i i i I, I fully agree. You know, the first time I went on Monsters After Dark, I was like, wow, this is like the first sequel attraction, you know? Yes. Because you, you ride the normal one during the day, and then when they switch it over, you're riding the sequel or what happens after that story takes place. And that was really cool. That was a really cool idea to, to, to bring up, and and it, and it works here. It's, you know, it's um, some of it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, like the, the, the opening... Uh, what is it, the pre-show with with Rocket himself in Monster Dark is really fun. Yes, <laughs> that's 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 kind of a hey, uh, these monsters here. Don't worry about them, but we gotta get crewed out. You know, yeah. um, yeah. it was that was really really cool. And it and actually it, shows the monsters like attacking the, the and he's like, uh, "You're fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Just keep don't going. worry about that. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Just you know, look delicious. You know, yeah." <laughs> um, that was uh it is it is fun guys you really got to check it out uh what happens when the guardians are actually you know broken out because we kind of see a little bit of that in the attraction but what are the ramifications of, of an event like that that's what monsters Dark, after dark is all about it's really cool now i wanted to ask you i know it would take some time to do like around every single night even on a regular basis but do you think that that's just appropriate to do around the Halloween time? Or do you think that would actually be something that they could have a day version of the attraction and then as night comes, do a quick switch and have it as a night attraction and just keep Monsters After Dark as a permanent type of sequel attraction? Uh, there is there. I think there is potential for that. I would like a few more profiles to, to round it out a, a little bit. Um, if it was going to be a permanent feature, but oh, I, you know, there have been ideas. Uh, um, if I could elaborate on a couple of them, there was an idea for a Pirates of the Caribbean overlay where, you know, during the day it's all it's the attraction we all know and love, but at night, uh, there was an idea to to switch the, the, the ride track, right? Uh, the idea was that there is a maintenance storage area for the boats behind all of the sets. And it's like, well, wait a minute. If we could take that area and theme it to something, then we could have a day attraction and a night attraction. And the night attraction was supposed to be, you know, what if we had uh, the, because the, the Black, Curse of the Black Pearl has this, um, this story element where the pirates upon the moon shining on them turned to skeletons. And it's like, what if we had like a skeleton version of the Pirates of the Caribbean that we all know and love, but in this kind of back alley way? And wouldn't that be really cool? And to be honest, I mean, you, you could pump the numbers for the night because as we all know, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of trails off a little bit, at least at Disneyland yeah. um, after a certain point, right? And we could pump those numbers up and, and we could have this kind of incredible experience. Um, for nighttime and it, it got pretty far but the 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 thing that held them back was it's like man that would really if you only do it for half the day it really hurts your capacity right yeah for both the day and night versions so it didn't quite uh work out but they were going along with that idea similarly with space mountain they were supposed to have a space mountain the rocket space mountain that you know played for like a season <laughs> was supposed to be the night version of Space Mountain permanent, and uh, I think that fell off the wayside for similar reasons. I think maybe that was budgetary related. Uh, all in all, that was probably for the best. For Monsters After Dark, though, I think it could work. I think I think that could really, um, if 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 they were to make it a permanent feature, yeah, I do think that could 
that would work out quite nicely. Like I said, if they were to enhance it with additional profiles, because uh, I think it's just the one for Monsters After Dark because it, right. it is kind of this kind of temporary overlay. How long overlay. is it usually down to switch? I thought it was like uh, maybe an hour, maybe like half an hour, hour. It's okay. not that long. Okay, because I'm wondering if they were to actually do that and it, it would be up to the people waiting in line if they're willing to wait an extra 30, 45 minutes to just stay in line and then they can just transition right into, you know, the Monsters After Dark. Like, I mean, cut it off. Like, don't let them actually in the building, but like maybe start the queue up outside. Already, right, right, right. And, and then and just kind of yeah, that's transition them in. Right, that's how it would work. That's how it would work for sure. Um, they would they would just do. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's similar to what they do right now, right? They just start a queue. Okay, hey, we're switching this over, and then by the time it's up, you you, you have people ready to go. Uh, from what I from what I understand, yeah, that that's 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 how it would work. And and honestly, they do it right now. Could it become a furnace feature? I I think there is potential for it uh, to do that. Yeah, I think as. For the amount of um, positivity that Avengers Campus has been getting, mm -hmm. I think it would be a nice little add-on just to the land itself. Because a lot of people, you know, when they think of Mission Breakout, they have to remember now that is now part of Avengers Campus. It's not mm -hmm. part of Hollywood land, right. you know. So it's now, you know, maybe, you know, in time that Avengers Campus ends up getting some nighttime features and what have you and then it becomes an actual permanent thing as far as mission breakout goes i would like that i would like that i think um the you know the one area that was left out of this entire party was avengers campus there was really nothing uh outside of the agatha uh tree trail there was really nothing that themed avengers campus for the halloween event uh so to have maybe more right centric themes uh, i think that could work you know it's interesting because uh, this brings up, you know, this reminds me at one point, Toy Story Midway Mania was supposed to have holiday overlays. <laughs> yes. And that never really materialized. Hopefully, you know, maybe we can see the, an iteration of that for Spider Man Web Slingers, which, by the way, I think that was your first time writing that as well. That was, that was actually the, uh, I think that was the final thing we've done for the, the night itself. We, we made our final ride on Web Slingers, which, yeah, I've never experienced it before. Um, as far as uh, the queuing was, um, I love the a attention to detail, like within the building itself. Yeah. Um, as far as the queue show goes, I think it ran a little bit longer than what I would like it to. You know, it kind of had some unnecessary dialogue that they needed to add there. Just kind of like bring it all together, get to the point and let's move on. Um the the ride via the ride system, um, which actually you brought to my attention, is actually not a whole lot of uh, holding for uh, gr uh, guest capacity at a time. You know, because you can only fit what what is it six eight people per car? Yeah, so per vehicle it's eight. Two vehicles are launched simultaneously. So that's a, a maximum of sixteen sixteen. Every sixty seconds was dispatch, okay. and uh, yeah, I was so kind of keeping. Pretty, yeah, yeah, that's it, pretty uh, uh, on the short end. <laughs> it's a, that's a little short. I mean, honestly, if you were to have a sixteen-person dispatch, you'd, you'd want that to be closer to twenty seconds or so. At that interval, I mean, we're talking like a thousand people an hour, which eh, not that much better than Dumbo, to be honest with you, or or even something like, uh, well, maybe maybe Peter Pan's pretty extreme, but but like a fantasy and traction like it's, it's 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 really not that not that uh not that much and so that's why that the i think the boarding groups were were instituted for that because there there just really isn't a lot of capacity to go around but one of the great features about the party is you get unrestricted access to web slingers exactly yes you can go again and again if you want and it's really really cool that that's it that's a nice feature to have yeah absolutely i think you know to kind of like top it off with a cherry on top you know mm -hmm. that it you know, to not need to have restriction for a boarding group or what have you. You could just enter the line as a normal standby line, and it comes with your your party ticket admission. You know, might, might as well utilize it. As far as the ride goes, um, I know there was a lot of criticism between the ride, like it's okay. I actually enjoyed the ride. I really did. I mean, it's not a ride that I would say, oh, I have to, I have to make it a point to make it my business to go on like rise, you know, rise yeah. is a whole nother different monster. Um, 
but I mean, if I had the opportunity to do it again, absolutely, I would do it. You know, it's fun to kind of, you know, uh, see how much points you rank up of defeating the spider bots and what have you. Um, but yeah, like in comparison to Rise, there, that's there's no comparison there. From what I understand with Web Slingers, there's some complex stuff you can do there. You know, I was kind of looking at the kind of the information that they listed in the queue. I haven't really, I really delved deep, uh, uh, delved deeply into Spider-Man and all the kind of the quirks of that uh, attraction. Not in the same way I have with like Toy Story Mania, for example. But I was kind of reading the kind of the queue literature and stuff like that, and and some of the instructions and it's like, wow, you can like pull levers and stuff. And there's some dynamic things that you can do. It's really unfortunate because I think web slingers was really made for a locals, uh, kind of replayability type, type, uh, type environment, right. Or type demographic. So with as many locals as we have in, 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 uh, you know, Disneyland in that area, uh, I think they really, we're kind of gearing this towards, hey, people are going to be able to ride this over and over again. Let's make it very complex. And this boarding system kind of screws with that a little bit. <laughs> yes. And, and, and at, at a time it was introduced, we didn't have any old passes. So it was kind of the, the lore and depth wasn't really explored. But I, there, there is a quite a bit of depth to the gameplay uh, attached to that that I, I really didn't, hadn't uh, quite seen before uh, on my first, on my first uh, ride through. Also, too, they do the scoring by your entire vehicle, so it mm -hmm. it, it really kind of uh, um, what is it incentivizes uh, participation and and so forth and helping out you know, members in your party and so to speak. So, it, uh, if for families and for kids, I think it I think there is potential there for it to be well received. But if you're coming from Rise and it's like, oh, this is the big new Spider-Man attraction, how much better is this going to be than Universal yeah. Spider-Man attraction? You're going to be Discipline for sure. Yeah, yeah. Don't have the the mentality that you know you're going to compare this to Universal's uh, Amazing Adventures of Spider Man, or if you're even going to compare it to Rise. Um, if you have that expectation, I suggest going on Web Slingers first, then experience Rise, not mm -hmm. the other way around. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it's just more so that Disney needed a, a kind of like a, a, a D ticket attraction because really, what's supposed to be the center core of that land is that the Quinjet attraction that we're, you know, we're waiting on. And I'm not going to say if I'm going to say when. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. We're, we're, we're waiting on that guys. It's coming folks. I swear. I swear. Uh, hopefully it is. Uh, I, I know we have uh, D23 Expo and Destination D coming up. So hopefully we get more information on, on, on that. Yes. But you, you have to remember, uh, you know, Avengers campus replaced bugs land, right? So with all of those, with those little, you know, little attractions for families and little, little ones, uh, they had to do something, uh, to, 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 to add capacity for them back in. And that's really what web singers was all about. It was always meant for kind of the little ones. And again, if you really think, as I mentioned before with mission breakout, you know, a lot of people, you know, tied that into Hollywood land where essentially mm -hmm. that was the beginning process of Avengers campus. So if you have mm -hmm. a ride like mission breakout and then you were to have an e-ticket Spider-Man kind of like a, a swinging pendulum type of ride, and then you'd have the Quinjet attraction. You know, those are three hard e-ticket attractions. Well, you just replaced the whole entire land, as you said, that used to be based off of kid and family attractions. Well, it's like, well, if you have little ones, what are they going to end up doing? So you kind of <laughs> have to find a balance there. Oh, yeah. And and what I like about it is it doesn't take up that much room um, in, a, in a park that's, you know, severely restricted when it comes to that that, that resource. So I, I like the kind of, um, you know, space saving that they, that they did with it. And I, I think it works for DCA. And I think long term, I think it'll be a nice addition to have, uh, especially with a park that's that's starred for attractions and starred for for things that little ones can do as opposed to its sister Parker along the way. Um, and it uh, definitely let's... had, and it definitely had a much, uh, higher pulse than unfortunately than what galaxy's edge has. Cause when we were sitting having dinner at the Pim's test kitchen, you know, you had, you know, the little mini stunt shows going on, you have the characters oh, wow. coming out. And I mean, like it just surrounds you in that environment that it's like, okay, I'm actually in the Avengers campus. There's a storyline to it where yeah. with galaxy's edge, there is supposed to be a storyline to it, 
but it kind of falls short because there's there's no life to the land. I I completely 100% agree. Um, you know, and and this is a discussion that I we will save for another time because I know our dear dear friend Orange Girl 55 wants to touch on this topic specifically yeah. and how it relates to like Star Wars Visions, for example, which doesn't yes. have like a set timeline. It's not canon. And the liberation that that brings from a creative and storytelling aspect kind of frees them up. And it's like, hey, you know, let's let's uh, let's let's just go all out. I wish they would have applied that for Star Wars Galaxy, but it's a whole other discussion. Yes, um, which definitely check that out, folks. It will be coming out in the near oh, future yeah. for our Orange no- Nerd episode. Definitely mm-hmm. check that out. Oh yeah, 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 and 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 also some of those Marvel lawsuits as we're on the uh, the topic of Marvel. But that's another story entirely. <laughs> but we, you know. Uh, to, to run our discussion for the party, you know, what's what was cool was, yes, it, it you know, it was busy, but the waits for attractions and some for some tree trails was actually not that bad. So, yes. I, you know, it, it provided just enough atmosphere and life uh, to, to to feel um, uh, what is it uh, to feel festive. But but not so much to where it was like, oh, there's a burden like oh, this. This ride's like 50 minutes. It, honestly, I think the. I mean, the longest wait, I think, was Raider Springs Racers, and I think that did top out at 15 minutes at some points, but even that even that went down uh, quite a bit. I think 30 minutes for Web Slingers, <laughs> walk-in for uh, stuff like uh, Soarin' and Credit Coaster and uh, Gardens of the Galaxy Mission after uh, Which, Gardens of the Galaxy uh, Mission Breakout. That actually did remind me, we did do the Incredit Coaster at night. It was my first time actually doing it at night, and I have to say, I love the roller coaster as a whole. You know, I do yeah. think that there are some... Th- thematic uh thematic elements that needs to be changed in the attraction um but as a roller coaster junkie i love that ride as a roller coaster but i tell you what folks it is so much better at night it is it is i i really do like that layout uh, um for that for that coaster i think it's one it's like a perfect coaster especially for that area for that resort for, you know for everything uh, related to it i think it's i think it's really really great uh but but yeah it does work a lot better at night it works mm-hmm. i mean it's even some of the effects for the in- incredibles side of it stand out even more i think yes. that's what you were saying right yeah absolutely like when you're in the tunnels and you see violet's force field and you see um jack jack turning into goo where uh elastigirl's trying to get like it it brings out more of the the um special effects uh, more as opposed to it being daytime where you may see it briefly but you don't get the full on effect as you do at night which is actually kind of sad in a way because when it's a bittersweet moment because when world of color returns you're not able to really ride the Incredit coaster at night um unless you actually hit a good timing where you're in line and right as the sun is setting because unfortunately you have two showings of world of color and by the time the show's done, the park is closed. The you know they they don't reopen those attractions over by Pixar Pier. So it is actually a treat that they're currently not doing World of Color, so you can have a more higher of a chance to ride those rides over there during nighttime. Because I mean, you and I both agree the pier at night is absolutely amazing. It's so good. It is. Uh, it's. And that's what disappoints me about DCA's closing hours. It's like, man, why do you have to close at 10? Can't we close a little bit later? Because just to experience the pier at night, I mean, it really does It really does work. I, I know uh, people have I, – I know I certainly have problems with the pier during the day and so forth, and some things but quite don't work. But, but that's where it makes sense at night. Yeah. It actually feels like a seaside pier at night. That's when the theming comes out. Yeah, it does. It does. And, and – it's just it's really unfortunate that the park doesn't stay open later and that will the color has that effect on the whole kind of pier uh, itself it just shuts out everything and that's uh, you know it's it, it is disappointing from what i understand i think we were saying that will the color might be coming back um, winter 2022 that's maybe? what i've heard from a, a reliable source i i do know it it's 2022 um I thought that I heard it was winter. I do know that Fantasmic is coming back way sooner before World of Color. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and they just uh, we we just saw some imagery of them draining 
this has been in the process for a little while, but they just have now started to drain the Paradise Beer Lagoon. So there's there's a little bit more uh, infrastructure work that needs to be done before that comes back in a dissimilar way to Fantasmic. I know they drain part, portions of the river as well to do some work on that, but uh, apparently Paradise well, Beer and, and Willa Collins a little you bit You have more. to think there was a lot of issues that they were having with that even before the shutdown yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. the barge actually drowned at the bottom of the lagoon and that like oh, took boy. forever and it, yes and it so there was a there was there was a uh uh what what how should i put it uh there was there was a critical panel box that was left open and uh, unfortunately that was exposed to water not good not good folks not good uh mm-hmm. so they, yeah they they still have to work the, some of those issues that i i believe uh, I had heard from that reliable source as well that uh, that had uh, they kind of worked that out, but maybe there's some additional work that needs to be done on that as well, so they can they can kind of refine. And this that. is the best time to do it, you know, while yeah. they have the dine time, you might as well do everything and just kind <laughs> of do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 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 they're they're doing that, and that's good to see. So we'll be we we'll getting shows back, you know, not too much longer, not too much longer from from what we have heard. Things are in the works, but uh, but for 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 World of Color in particular, that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit longer. But uh, but hopefully, there's some some other events in the Disneyland Resort area and in Walt Disney World to keep you occupied. Uh, like uh, we have a show coming up here soon about uh, some new shows. So yes, stay tuned for that. Uh, was there anything else that you want to you wanted to say about uh, Oogie Boogie Bash? I think honestly, just overall, if you have the opportunity to. Uh, make the party i know this year they're completely sold out you know if you weren't able to get a ticket definitely try next year it's definitely worth the money it's definitely worth waiting the time on the phone or online to to get the tickets well i don't think it's on over the phone i think it's just strictly online yeah i think it's i think it's strictly online i think there's some phone aspect to it hotel guests i don't know but yeah online um and i know they had problems uh, <laughs> so uh, when they said that they were going live with tickets, a lot of people kind of front loaded it and, and uh, pe- apparently people were waiting hours. What I did for my ticket specifically was I tried to log in and refresh the page before that time actually came up. And it actually did like, I think like 18 minutes before they were supposed to go live. I was able to go into the queue and do that. So I was in and out. <laughs> 10 minutes maybe <laughs> so i didn't have quite the experience that you guys had so whatever disney does that with with any digital event or yeah, yeah don't wait for the actual minute that they say it's yeah going on. yeah yeah try to try to get in earlier so that so that if they do go live earlier you, you can have a shot uh, that, that's been in my experience it's worked out so also too um if you can schedule a visit to villains grove during the second or first parade that would be very, very helpful because yes. apparently that queue gets gets mighty long. Yes. <laughs> so if you can kind of balance it out with 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 some other event that takes people away from that area, that'd be the best call. Absolutely, because I remember when we went through the Villains Grove and we came out, that line was much longer than when we first started. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, so overall, I I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed the party. I'm so glad I got to experience it for myself. I, again, sir, thank you so very much for inviting me to allow to share that experience with you. It was awesome. We definitely have to do it again um, in the future for many things that Disney has oh, yeah. to come. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, no, it was our pleasure. It was our pleasure. Uh, you know, we, we wanted that, uh, we, we, we had a, um, how should I call it? Uh, we had somebody that wasn't able to go, and I, I knew that ticket could find a good home with you. And it just all kind of worked out that we were visiting at the same time, and and uh, that and that you know you didn't have to leave, uh, uh, you know, b- b- before that day came up. So that was that was real nice. So yes, uh, really it would well. definitely have to do that again. Absolutely, definitely. And I want to thank you all for uh, joining us, Mister Vasky, my brother. It's always good to have you on the channel. And uh, please definitely come back on again. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I, I definitely, definitely will. Uh, thank you so much, brother. I really do appreciate uh, you having me on, have, uh, being able to talk about it. This was really, really fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, stay Disney. Bye, everybody.